Christian and Yeshua. Thank you very much. So kind, so kind. How, how's everyone? Everyone good? Yes. Yeah, thank you. I'm, I'm good and well of myself. Um, I feel like I present as a strong, confident black man until you hear me speak. <laughs> and then you're like, oh, that was the wish with the monkey's paw. Like, yeah, yeah, give him broad shoulders, but give him a lisp, you know? Like, keep him humble, keep him humble. And like, yeah, he can grow a beard, but it'll never connect. <laughs> as he'll never connect with another human being. And like, make him emotionally intelligent, intellectually uncurious. <laughs> and into myself. I, I feel like I can do more. I've been trying to do a little bit more, trying to do a bit more research into UK specific black history, because they don't teach it in schools. And I came across this sign that they used to hang up outside of restaurants as late as the 70s that just said, no blacks, no Irish, no dogs. Oh, like, damn. Ugh. But then I thought about it, like, that was 50 years ago. We've come so far. You know, like, white people, you, you really come around on dogs. <laughs> you really come around on dogs. Like, compared to the 60s, when it was just white people and cats in restaurants, <laughs> we progressed. Woo! And I, I like dogs, but the way white people like dogs makes me want to not like dogs. <laughs> like, I don't, you guys must be familiar with Crofts, like the dog the Olympics. Because that was airing on BBC One for like 50, 60 years. And then do you know how long we had to wait for Big Nasty? Like, oh, <laughs> fucking time. And it's on, it's on dating apps where I see it the most. And I'm like, ugh. Because every girl's bio on Hinge or Tinder just reads like, um, I love my dog. <laughs> I'm not here to meet boys, I'm here to pet dogs. <laughs> I'm only swiping right for my pics of your dog. And I'm always like, yo, fair enough. I'm only swiping right for my pics of your feet. <laughs> <laughs> I have the decorum to say what I'm after, not be like a, a freaking hybrid. So I was, I was actually going out with one of these dog girls from Hinge who had like the nicest size fives you've ever seen. <laughs> Step on me. <laughs> but, <laughs> she would do this thing where whenever we went back to her place and she put the key in her door and opened it, her dog would just come running down the hallway and just jump into her arms and then start licking her face. And it was really cute till she'd like turn her head <laughs> and start kissing it back. And I was like, Ugh! I've seen that exact dog lick its own butthole. <laughs> so she's tasting dog butt right now, and I'm disgusted, but most of all furious, because in all the time we've been going out, she's never once eaten my ass. <laughs> <laughs> and I've asked, honestly, that was day two. I was like, oh, do you like cake? And I, do you like this cake? <laughs> but I, in reality, I gave her an ultimatum. I was like, either you're tasting both our asses, or none of them. And I think it's fair. And it ended in this weird Mexican standoff where she was looking at me with a lot of disgust, confusion, and anger. The dog was just ogling her, trying to get to second base. And I was stuck looking at the dog for some fucking solidarity. <laughs> like, it's not the 60s anymore, man. We're both getting in a restaurant. <laughs> and with a meal. <laughs> in my notes. It says, and then you slap your ass to raucous applause. <laughs> 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 um, I'm, I'm black. I don't know if I made that clear. I'm, I'm bisexual. I wonder if I made that clear. Uh, but I'm also a gamer. So well, um, that's what we call in this industry a uh, triple threat. <laughs> triple threat. To your dad's Judeo-Christian view. <laughs> um, I only came up very recently as well, so I've only just recently stepped into the queer space and it's been so fun and interesting, especially coming from like the black community with all of its rampant homophobia, then stepping into the queer community and seeing all of its rampant racism. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so eye-opening and I was like, oh man, it's, it's, it's funny because I feel like homophobia in the black community is not talked about enough, but it's like such a, such a big part of it, such an untalked about part of it because there's this stereotype about Jamaican men, which I'm not sure if you've heard, but it's just that Jamaican men, quote unquote, don't eat pussy because they think that shit's gay. What? Exactly. <laughs> Makes no sense that these straight men aren't licking a vagina for fear of being perceived as gay. It made no sense to me 
as as a bisexual, as a as a Nigerian as well, because in Nigeria we would never we'd never do that. We we would we don't eat pussy because uh, we think it's icky. <laughs> <laughs> no homophobia about it. Um, I was going on. I went on a date very recently in Brixton, and it was going very well. I'm a charming young man, <laughs> and I came across. We hopped. It was going really well. We went into this Jamaican corner shop just to pick up some drinks, and in the corner shop they just had like red stripe, Heineken, Carlsberg. So my date went to the Jamaican guy running the store and was like, oh, do you have anything fruity? And then quick as a flash, he just pointed to me and goes, fruity, try him. <laughs> <laughs> and like, the bisexual in me is like, that's homophobic. But then the black in me is like, it's really funny though. It's <laughs> real quick off the mark, it's real, it's real thing. <laughs> Uh, but do you want to know how I, how the comedian in me like fought back, or I bit back my comedic serpent tongue? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he, he goes, uh, fruity, try in. And I hit him with one of these. I hit him with a, uh... <laughs> <laughs> and then I proceeded to buy my goods in full. <laughs> because I'm a coward. <laughs> I'm scared. I'm, I'm scared of a lot of things. I've got hay fever and I'm afraid of bees. Don't confront me on anything. I'm weak. I'm weak. I'm scared to do a lot of things. I've never, I've never tasted my own cum because I'm too scared. I'm too scared. What if it tastes bad? What if it tastes good and I can't stop eating it? Uh, I could be shooting out jelly beans. For poison. I don't know, I just know I don't have the courage to deal with that knowledge. I don't have my heart. I'm, I'm, I'm scared to like put my real thoughts and feelings in the conversation naturally. I have to package it as a joke and then be like, ha, but for real though. <laughs> like my thoughts on women's deodorant, I'm a huge fan of women's deodorant, big fan, I love it. You ladies just have so many more flavors. So like wild rose with vanilla, jasmine with cocoa milk. <coughs> and then men, we've got the four flavors of sport, dry, active. <laughs> Garbage. Set. And like for like women's perfume as well, you've got scents that make sense, like lavender or vanilla. And then men, we I've never smelled a men's cologne that doesn't smell the exact same way that Red Bull tastes. <laughs> and just bad juju in a bottle. But what gets me the most is how they advertise it. So for like women's perfume, it's always beautiful girl, long flowing hair, just Rolling around in a field of a field of flowers, no fear of pollen, because she's a goddamn queen. <laughs> she looks straight at the camera, has a full-on orgasm at it, and the voiceover comes on. Sir on the party, my dear. <laughs> and then for men's cologne adverts, it's always white guy with stubble or bald black man just marching, <laughs> <laughs> rain pouring. He shirts off, obviously. <laughs> he walks through a brick wall, unfazed. He's a man. A wolf comes running by. <laughs> the man doesn't look at it. Just fucking punches it. <laughs> Rips out his heart, lifts it to the sky, and squeezes the blood over his chest. And the voice that comes on savagery. But you go, boss. <laughs> And I'm always watching these adverts, like, man, I want to come in a field. I would love to come in a field. She looks like she's having a great time. This boy looks like he's going to get dysentery. Like, let, me, let me smell like I'm coming in a field. But for real, though. Oh, I'm so stupid, huh? I wanted to talk. Um, actually, no, I wanted to, now that I've gotten to know all of you a little bit, I want to hit you with my high IQ joke, which I never really do unless I'm sure the audience can catch on. And I believe in you guys. I see a few people Woo! here with glasses, so I know you guys are <laughs> smart. So, yeah, riddle me this. When Borat goes on holiday to Italy, where does he go? Venice! <laughs> it's a real thing, you've got to get the cogs turning in your head. Just mull on it, just mull on it. I'll, I'll get back to it. Um, I, I really, I feel like there's not been a better smear campaign than what wasps have done to bees with the whole yellow and black jacket situation. I don't think anyone's really done such a gruesome smear campaign because I hate wasps. I'm scared and terrified of wasps. 
If I see yellow and black in my periphery, my vision goes red and I'm ready to kill. And that's just the what, but I hate bees by association from the fact that they're just wearing yellow and black. And I, I, I take this with me everywhere because if I, I went to Alton Towers, there's a ride called the Smiler and it's just got this yellow and black aesthetic and I threw up before I even got in the line. <laughs> I can't even watch Borussia Dortmund play football. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's so hard because I feel like bees had the whole yellow and black jacket situation sorted out first. I think they had it first. Because it's, like, it's a stylish, iconic co uh, color combination. And it just feels horrible that Wasp have taken it. And I just hate yellow and black by association. That's weird. And anyway, this is a model way of saying that this is how I feel about how what white people have done with the word woke. <laughs> <laughs> Where, like, we had a thing going on. Like, woke started in the 40s in Harlem, and it meant just being aware to, 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 of your history, your roots, and uh, racial oppression and stuff. Just knowing where you stand in society. So for like me as a 14 year old, it meant, oh, when I go to this festival, I might get stopped and searched by the police, whilst my white friends with pockets full of drugs <laughs> will get away scot-free. And it didn't mean just what it now means as being nice, or just caring about the environment, or having a black dad and a Burger King advert. It was like, <laughs> it was like a little bit non-nuanced. But anyway, it's just, it was just another thing that Wasps went in and took and ruined it for us bees. And it really hurt me. It really hurt me. I want you to bounce this line of brains. When Borat <laughs> goes on holiday to France, where'd he go? Nice! <laughs> Again, you've got to get the cogs turned. Um, I have chosen not to be a billionaire as well. Thank you, I am very great. Um, I, I don't want to be a billionaire because I, I think it's too much money and I don't know why they want to do it. They say it's to share the wealth with your friends and loved ones. And I get that up to a point. Because like, mom and dad, I'll share it with them. Sister, kids, I'll share it with them. Grandkids, I don't know them. I, I don't know them, and they could be white for all I know when I get rich. And because you know what happens when black men get rich? Their kids get a lot whiter. Like, look at Michael Jackson, look at Kanye West. It's what happens, it's what happens. And I don't think I could really deal with that, but I still want to aim for like a certain level of wealth. And I call that one the Tom Hanks level of wealth which is where your teenage son or daughter comes up to you and says that they want to be a DJ, and then you're fine with it. <laughs> you're like, it's okay, pursue artistic endeavors. <laughs> and that's the level of wealth that I'm trying to get to with this comedy career. <laughs> I just want to be able to let my son or daughter follow through with an artistic <laughs> endeavor and not have the urge to slap them silly. <laughs> I'm not talking about actual experience, I, I am, I am, my mum didn't like it. My mum and dad wanted me to be a doctor and I just didn't want to get hit, so I just did, I just did what they said. Um, I will leave you on this one, which is another bit of a thinker. So, really just mould this one in your brains. But when Boras goes on holiday to Greenland, what does he see? Ice. <laughs> you guys have been lovely. I've been Eddie Show. Thank you very much. Well, make a bit more noise, guys.